hello, my name is Emma and I am here with the one and only Sarah G. Hi! Sarah is here at Books of Wonder and she is signing some copies of The Empire of Storm. So if you'd like to order a signed copy by this lovely author, you can definitely go to booksofwonder.com. But since we are here in honor of the upcoming release of Empire of Storms, you want to give us an idea of like what we can expect in five words or less? Alright. Um, trying to think. <laughs> I think like the scope of the world really expands mm -hmm. in this book. So like it's epic in the sense of like everything. Just, like you get to see more of like the world and like the characters interacting with it. Uh, brutal. Um, things are intense. <laughs> uh, romantic. I mean like romantic embodies like the smutty, steamy, and also like romant like deeply romantic things. Um, how are we at? Three. Fun. I had a lot of fun writing this book. Like a lot. <laughs> A lot of fun. I think it's the most you could ask for. Yeah, I just like, I, like I got really like fangirly over some of the <laughs> scenes. Um, and then, let's say bloody, because Aelin, obviously, she's involved. Well. <laughs> I like how you have like such a nice balance of like fun and romance. It's and also, fun like, and brutal. And bloody. <laughs> <laughs> so recently, we have gotten some of my really exciting announcements yeah. for your upcoming books. We have a third class coloring book. We have more in some books of the Akatar series. So do you want to tell us like what inspired you to expand on these worlds and like what the process has been like? Well, with the Akatar series, I've I've had that in my mind for a while, and I've been working on it for a while, and I kind of knew how I wanted it to end. Um, but in actually working on these books, once they got that they got published, I started thinking about like that third book and getting really sad that it would end after book three. And so I actually began working on this project just for fun, um, as this like manuscript. And I can't say who it's about or when it takes place, but it was just a fun manuscript set in the world with characters that I adore. Um, and I would work on it like after like I was working on like, my daily my daily deadlines and like the stuff I actually have to work on. Um, and I got about like 250 pages into that, and I was like, I think I actually really want to tell this story. And so my wonderful publisher got on board, and so now I just turned in the third draft of the third Akatar book a couple of days ago. So I'm on like a major, like my deadline brain is like, I am like totally out of it. Um, but so it wasn't as horrible to like finishing that third book because it's not saying goodbye yet. Um, but so I'm really, really excited about these three new books that we can't talk about yet. Um, and then with like the coloring books, we're doing an Akatar coloring book. Um, so and that, yeah, I'm really excited for that. Uh, and doing the Throne of Glass coloring book was really fun because we got to show the world that kind of has how I see it, but also how these amazing illustrators interpreted it. Um, and I love art. Like I'm obsessed with Pinterest. Like Pinterest is my addiction. I so, yeah. Oh my god, oh my god, it's like, thin. I can like cut out, like, if I'm on like a social media break to like focus on a deadline, I can cut out like the Twitter or like Instagram, but then like Pinterest, Pinterest I can't think of much of Pinterest. Um, so doing the coloring book and like actually creating art for the series is just amazing and some of the illustrations of how I see things with the, the characters and then um, some of it's the, the illustrator's interpretation and so I love that collaborative process where they left their mark as well as like you know, me. And so it's, I'm excited to do that again with the Akatar coloring book and uh, we've got a Throne of Glass compendium coming out where it's like an encyclopedia of our Throne of Glass. So cool. I, that's like really I'm legit. I'm like, yeah. I feel like so many big book series like should have that. And it, well, now there's so many in the Throne of Glass world. There's so many characters, yeah. and so much like history and all these places that I need this. <laughs> to so be like a guide for any kind of writing. Yeah. <laughs> Prefer like what character? Like what eye color does this character have? I have had to be, like for like a random side character oh God, to like so make sure that their their eye color was the right color. That is interesting. <laughs> I feel like if I were to be <laughs> like constantly like I don't even remember this guy's eye. So you have discussed in previous interviews that Throne of Glass and Echo are kind of part of like the same megaverse and you could potentially open a word gate and like the two worlds would combine, right? It is possible. Uh, you could technically be like sitting in a room in the Throne of Glass world and open up a portal and wind up in a room in the Court of Thorns and Roses world. Uh, I can't guarantee that it will happen, but like maybe once the like both series are done, everyone will have like a family Christmas. And they'll all hang out with <laughs> whoever survives. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, Don't make so a <laughs> It's like the humor is my way of like dealing with my own like feelings <laughs> about these issues. Um, 
But yeah, the, you could technically like say that they, they are it's like string theory or like they live in your versus yeah. Um And I sometimes think about that like way too much for <laughs> a normal person. So because like they could potentially be connected and like even when I'm reading I can see similarities between the worlds of the two. So do you ever get confused while writing? Like is there a way that you distinguish between the two so you don't like have like split ups every once in a while? <laughs> they mostly stay separate when I write uh, because on a very basic level, Thorn of Glass is third person with like many points of view. And then these Court of Thorns and Roses books, that's one person limited to Feyre's point of view. So just the way I approach the books and the way I hear the, the voices and see the world is like completely different. Um, I do, like I am unable to like, work on Thorn of Glass in the morning and then Akhtar in the afternoon. It has to be focused on one of the series at like any given time. So I'll focus on whatever edits I have, make that deadline and jump to the next one for the other series. Um, just because I can't, I can't like, I don't know, like I, I need to like be immersed in like the, the characters in the world. Um, but then I did have my first little like moment <laughs> where I was working on Empire of Storms and I realized that Crusader Blue Blood, um, I actually used Crusader, like the name in Akamath. And like, I just somehow, didn't realize that I'd already used that name. Oh so keeping tra- now I'm like obsessed with like keeping track of like the names because I have a list of all the names for each character in either series, but okay. I don't have like a giant chart of like both series and I don't want to do that because <laughs> let's just like say like it's a very common name in both worlds and like whatever. Um, so like not on wood, that. that's like the only time that will happen. So if you had to insert any of your characters from Thor Glass into the Avatar world and vice versa, who would you choose and why? Like, are there any like dynamics that you'd be really interested to see? Just like the idea of this, like I can't even tell how I feel about this, but Reese and Ayla oh, oh my god. Meeting, like either it'll be like crazy chemistry or like zero interest. I don't know, I feel like they're similar in so many ways. I don't know. They're like Cassian and Aelin hanging out. They can just like burn the city down. Yeah, well, Cassian and, like, and Adian would, would burn yeah. a whole city down. Um, but Cassian is banned from the summer court because he like mm-hmm. it's like he wrecked one building. <laughs> I have not written the like I wrecked one building story uh-huh. yet. Maybe I'll do that one day. Oh my gosh. Uh, like why so Cassian so. is banned? And I feel like it's probably highly likely that Aelin will be banned from a city at some point. I, would see I think she'd be proud. She'd yeah. be proud to be there. I feel there like there are anyone's face. Yeah. <laughs> so coming from like the fans' perspective and like obviously there's so many fans watching, have you had any really memorable fan moments when people are like either tweeting you or like at the best if anyone like oh, said yeah. something really special or giving you like a good like, Yeah. So oh my god. Okay. I always cry <laughs> talking about some of these stories. <laughs> I mean, first of all, it means so much to me that anyone takes the time to tweet me or email me or Instagram photos or like, like, and just like come to my events too. Like, I, like this is what I wanted to do since I was a teenager. So the fact that people like, care about these books and, and want to like talk to me about them, like I love that. That's like part of why I love writing them. Um, but then like there have been some special, special moments. I had this signing in Nashville a couple of years ago. And, in the signing line, I saw this kind of like tall, like older man, and I was like, "Oh, it's someone's dad." And then he was like getting closer, and I was like, "Wait, like he's alone?" And like usually, like I do have some male readers, but like usually it's like a lot of like female readers that come to my events. And so I was like looking at this guy, and I was like, "Why is he here? <laughs> what does he want?" And so he gets up to the table, um, and he goes, "I, you know, I'm a big fan of your books, but I'm also here today for someone else." And he went on to tell me that he is actually a uh, a nurse at a children's cancer hospital and that he had a patient, this teenage girl, who uh, was fighting a really nasty, uh, like, a, she, had, she had cancer and it was a really nasty, awful fight and she was terrified of needles. So doing the chemo was like torture yeah. for her. And he wound up talking, they wound up talking to distract her about uh, the books that they loved. And it turns out that they both loved my books. And so they would talk about the current class books uh, to distract her while she was getting needles in her arm and going through chemo. Um, and so he was telling me this, and then he told me that he showed up that night because she didn't make it. And like, I'm like going to cry talking about this. Um, and so like, like, I just like started like hysterically crying at the table because like, you know, this, like I write about like kick ass like women but like like that that girl like she was like a real fighter like, she was like a real hero and, like she like it just meant the world to me that he came to tell me her story and I've never forgotten that every, I cry every time I even like tell that story um but it's just that that was one of the special moments and I've had ones like I've had like people come up to the table and say I'm literally 
here in the line today because I read your books and it stopped me from doing something that I shouldn't have done. And, like that always, like that always floors me. Um, and I'm like a happier you know, like there, there are people who have like babies that they name after characters. I'm like, I love. I'm like, oh, there's like a little Selena walking around in the world. What's really funny is I can tell you, like, I'm the children and my daughter's gonna be favorite. There's like no joke. Like, I think it's like the pretty human Oh my god, so, he's agreed to it. So really, like, oh my god, that's awesome. No, my I will tweet you in a couple years when I have a daughter. Be like, welcome to the world, Vera. Oh my god, I'm just I would be honored. I would be deeply honored. But also, like, if you decide, like, I'm not gonna give my kid this weird name. Oh no, um, like it's set in stone, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> There's no going back at this point. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I feel like those are like the most rewarding moments of the game. Yeah, I know it is. And I like I got a, a a handwritten letter from a woman in the US Army um, who told me that she actually suffers from um, major PTSD from, from her army experience and from also having an abusive relationship and reading a port of mist and fury. Um, made her realize that like she like needed to get the help and that she wasn't alone and she like quote like there was one point in the letter she quoted that quote from Matilda where it was like you know authors like write their books and send them out like ships into the sea for readers to find and she said you know, uh, Akamath wasn't just the ship that you sent out that found me it was the life raft like your, your book was the life raft that was thrown to me um, and I like I read that letter at my kitchen counter and just like <laughs> cried and cried and cried and that's like, like hearing those kinds of stories like I, I create basically in a bubble alone in my office and you know, getting those accounts where um, my book made a difference like that, that never gets old like that's always like such an honor such an honor for me so, I like can't even talk about this stuff yeah I'm like, like I'm so sorry for making you so no I'm like I'm a very emotional person but then talking about people that are like wonderful like that is, my heart my Grinch heart like grows. <laughs> <laughs> so if Mean Girls were to be recreated from characters in your books, who would you choose? And you can totally gender swap, like, if you want, like... Oh, okay, um, I feel like Aelin would kind of be oh, Regina George, uh, and she would love every second of it. Absolutely. Um, oh my god, Dorian would be a little Gretchen in the characters. Um, <laughs> okay, what was the exact question? Perfect, Dorian. Karen, is that the, the dumb, yeah. the dumb, dumb the one? one? I feel like Elaine would be kind of like. Oh my Karen. god! <laughs> <laughs> the Elaine fans are gonna. <laughs> so one thing I wanted to do for dinner is, as soon as I found out like this was all set up very kindly by Missouri uh, and everyone, I had this vision of having a kind of throne of glass versus Akata round, where basically I don't make you choose your favorites because I know it's like picking children, but because you have these two hugely successful series, that's not something every author like has under their belt. And so, you know, I think it's very impressive, and so I thought it'd be interesting to see like how the two compare in your mind on like a very like, Basic level, like nobody. I don't think anyone would be offended by your answers right, or anything. Right. I apologize in advance. Yeah, we're we're not here to offend you guys. To start off, which book took you the longest to write? Oh man. Well, with all of my books, I'm on such intense deadlines that I have to work on them kind of in bits and pieces. I mean, Throne of Glass doesn't even count because I worked on that for yeah. like <laughs> ten years or whatever until it got published. Um, but I mean, they're all kind of like the same, or I get just like a couple months, um, and like they each get like longer and longer. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, Empire of Storms looks like skinny now, this is like seven um, but it's actually the longest book. We switched to thinner paper because I obviously have a problem. <laughs> it looks short. Um, so we've got like Bible pages now. Um, oh, it's exciting. <laughs> well, now, now I'm like, oh, now I can like make the final book like twice that. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so I like who knows how long that will take me to write, but I usually get like just a couple months, and it's roughly the same. Just like not a good answer for that. No, it's okay. Um, I'll half a point each. Yeah. <laughs> um, so would you say any of them took you longer to write, or it's like they're just no? I mean they're basically like all the same. Um, I mean yeah, it's really just like I, I get like I have like deadlines, and, like my life is all just like schedule deadlines. Um, all, it's more about like what took something out of me emotionally uh -huh. to write. I mean, like, like, Air of Fire was, like, I called it, like, the migraine book because I cried so much while writing Air of Fire that I had a migraine headache oh every gosh, day. Um, which, like, when I'm writing a book for, like, a month, is like, a lot, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of headaches. Um, 
Yeah, like, there was really, like, one that took the longest. They all take forever. Um, but it's not even that long. Like, I only get a couple months really to write the first draft, and then, like, you know, about a year after that to, to edit. So, if you were put on the spot right now and had to jump into writing a short story, you of the world, what one would you pick? Like, just like randomly? any of the short stories, like the... like if you like had to write a new short story oh my God. and you were like, uh, what would you pick? What one do you think you'd pick, just like based off of like your mindset right now? I don't know. I feel like I would. Um, I would go to the Akatar world and like have a short, like be there when Reese and Cassian and Asriel do like a blood rite. Um, which like wouldn't be a fun thing. It's like they like, murder each other in the mountains. Um, but I feel like that would be. I think like, they're really so hot, so like they're like yeah. shirtless oh, and covered course. in blood and killing That's people. all we like, want to read. I don't know what that says about me, but I'm like, oh, that's like very sexy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my priorities are clearly in order. <laughs> that's that's a good. Time. I feel like a lot of people would want to read that too. Like I don't think you're alone. In that. Okay, all right. Well, at least I'll just have you. Like, I'll yeah, share it with true. you. Oh my God, absolutely. <laughs> so I don't know how you're going to be able to answer this one, but um, firstly, do you ever imagine covers like beforehand? Like, have you ever seen one in your head? Or, I'm like, not you actually, really. Like, Usually, Bloomsbury and I have a collaborative process <laughs> now oh, with the covers great. where they'll say, like, do you, like, we have these poses in mind. Like, do you have any in mind? It's like the Throne of Glass covers. Yeah. And then, like I will use my Pinterest board and be like, well, I like That's this kind so of cool. image, and like, and especially for the the dresses on the back of the front of glass ones, I'll send dresses that like I click with me and put them in the book. Um, and so we'll work with the illustrator on, on that. Um, but it's kind of a back and forth process where sometimes what I think will work actually looks really stupid. Oh. Um, but Bloomsbury is really great at like you know listening to me and like trying things out. But usually with the cover process, it's. Lots of like adjusting over like several months, and we're we're just getting started on the Avatar three Ooh. cover. Uh, yeah, that'll be. I've been that'll like be trying to guess what like the colors gonna be for like months. I'm like, I, don't I actually don't know yet. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, there's not that like you never have to look at that before. Because I feel like that's great. No, because a lot of people, a lot of authors don't get that privilege. No, to, like, I mean like I've been lucky. Initially, it was not the case, but I've been really lucky with Bloomsbury where. We have an amazing design team and like art team, Obviously. and a great and a great illustrator for both of the, both of the covers. So, um, you know, they it's very much like everyone working on this and everyone giving input and like making it the best cover that it can be. Um, but at the end of the day, like I do like to trust Bloomsbury, like because they, they know like this is their job, like they yeah. know like what works for the market and all those things. And so, but they, they they're great about like you know, like, oh, like can like you know can this be tweaked in that? Like they'll 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 listen. To me. So, um, yeah, so they're they're wonderful. Are there any books that you feel have had like significant changes in the first draft? Or are they all like again like kind of in this area? I mean they're mostly all the like I whenever I do like when I turn in the rough draft, I always know that I'm gonna do major changes throughout because the rough draft is kind of I call it draft zero. Or it's just like the bones of the story where they are like not in the right like order sometimes and I just need to get something down so I can then edit it and find what the real story is and what I actually want, like the story I want to tell. Um, so some, sometimes, well, every book I think is like the same, like, really intense editorial process. Um, Empire of Storms went through a bunch of changes, Queen of Shadows went through a bunch of changes. Um, Akamath was more about expanding stuff with that that book um, and, like, and adding things that made me go back and change things earlier. Um, so it's really, and every book's a different journey. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like how I approach it and how long it takes me to get and find the right story, um, and then like what parts of the story are strong or remain the same. Like with um, with A Court of Mist and Fury, I really worked my editor on the beginning of the book. Uh, we like focused on like those first like 120 pages of just like tightening and finding like the right like, pace for that. Um, and I'm working on. The third Akatar book right now, and my editors read the first 200 pages, and she said, The first 120 pages are perfect, you don't need really? to touch them. Um, That's so, like, exciting. yeah, so, like, it'll be a very different thing where, like, so, like, I, when I write a book, I, I don't really like, know what the strengths will be, so it's like, it's always exciting to me because I, like, exciting in the way that, like, I find pleasure in, like, having my book ripped apart. But, like, <laughs> but when it's like, I think that in order to make the book as strong as it can be, I need to be able to, like, work with my editor and take the book down to a basic level and see what's working, what isn't working, um, like, what can I push myself on? And that's, that's part of why I love it. Why I love what I do. <laughs> 
what is one book that you feel like you have the most distinct memories writing? Um, I mean, all of them. So with Throne of Glass, I can look at yeah. I can look at like certain sentences or moments, and I remember where I was when I first wrote those scenes. Um, which is always like it's kind of like my growing up is woven between the words of Throne of Glass. Um, so that one, that book always like, means the most to me. Um, I can imagine. Yeah, just like I, you know, like that. That was the book. Everything that I have is because of Carmen Glass. So it's, I, I love that book. I'm very proud of it. Yeah, I'm very grateful to my readers for making all of this happen. Are there any books that have given you like a really bad piece of writer's block? Um, the third Akatar book, which I just turned in, around the middle, I real I knew where I wanted to go. Making that like there was a little like leap in the plot that I like literally had to sit down and be like, well, la, 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 this happens when this character shows up. Um, and then I it wound up kind of actually, just like forcing myself to write, wound up being kind of like a downhill push where it just like rolled into like the actual story I needed to tell. Um, so I already know what I need to fix to like strengthen that stuff. Um, and that's like, I love drafting because I really get to push myself to that where I will come up with moments where I'm like, I don't know what happens right now. I don't know how to get to this next thing. And that's where I really feel that like, as a writer, I can say, you know what, like, doesn't mean the book's broken. Like, like how can I look at this and fix it? And those are the moments where I feel like really like electrified where I can, when I make it work, I love, I love that feeling. Um, I'm, watch, I'm watching the Olympics while working on the third book. I was like so motivated. Yeah, like, if Phelps can do it, I can do it. Yeah. Which is insanity. So in real life, what cast of characters do you think you would get along with? In real life, I feel like Dorian and I would be good I friends. I could see that. He wants all the fine things in life. <laughs> Reading, wine, like clothes. Clothes. Um, I think like Sandra and I would be good friends. Oh, okay. Sarah and I would probably be pretty good friends. More, more and I would be good friends. Um, like I would be very intimidated by how attractive he is, so I wouldn't be able to speak to him or Cassie or Asriel. I just feel like, like in terror. And like Rowan would be so intense that I would just be like, "You're so hot," but like I'm like I I'm, like like all the men I just feel like. But Dorian's like so approachable and so nice. That, like, yeah, so I think I'd be buddies with him. Um, and more would be really fun to hang out with. Aelin, like, I think she'd be, like, awesome, but also, like, slightly exhausting. Yeah. But I think she also is really lazy, so if I'm like, can we just go home and lie in bed and eat food, and she'd be like, okay. I feel like she'd totally be down for that. Maybe <laughs> final question. We've already talked about what's coming for, like, Akatar and Throne of Glass. I know you have Catwoman coming out, and if there's anything else, you probably can't talk about it, but are you planning anything besides the books, or are you focusing on what you have to do now, because God knows it's going to take you a couple of years to finish uh, I do have other books. Books in mind that I will not talk about. Um, of course, but I, I definitely <laughs> um, I have an idea of what I would like to work on once Thorn of Glass is done, and I'm excited about it. And I'm hoping that maybe it'll all come together, and I can talk about it in the future. But um, yeah, I think I know like where I want to go as a writer from, from here. Yeah. So at least we know like. Like there will be more. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be time. like, and I'm done. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> this is like what I love. So I think no matter what, I will always be writing new stories and telling stories. And I'm really lucky where I have an amazing publisher that yeah. wants to publish my stories <laughs> and amazing readers that actually pick them up and champion them. So um, as long as I can do that, uh, I will consider myself quite lucky and very grateful. That's fantastic. Okay, well, I think that concludes this interview. So, thank you so much, Sarah, for being on my thank channel. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to keep your eye out for Empire of Storms, which is coming out September 6th, right? Yes, yes I just want to make sure that date was correct. But With September the Glass and coloring book. With coloring book. So, when you go to get one, you can get both. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon for a new one. Bye. Thanks.
don't think it recorded. That's what I was thinking. <gasps> I'm dying. <laughs> this has never happened to me before. I am That's what so I was sorry. That's why I, I wanted to make sure. I was like, oh, I'm dying. She must have watched it.